Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we'll be making this laptop animation and I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do, please leave a like. And as I mentioned last time, I was in the market for a new laptop so I can take my work on the road over the course of this summer. So I'm all the more excited that this tutorial is sponsored by Asus and Intel and they sent over their Pro R Studiobook 16 OLED laptop to test out. In my last video I mentioned several important things that made this laptop my pick for the summer, so if you haven't seen it definitely go check it out. Today I want to dive a bit deeper into additional features and quality of life improvements this laptop brings. Apart from the fact that it's powered by 13th gen Intel Core i9 processor and provides beast performance, it also comes with a 180 degree hinge, Asus Pen 2.0 and a full touch support with 4K pressure sensitivity, transforming the laptop into an R canvas in a split second. And as you'll touch and grab your laptop a lot, Asus thought about that too and the laptop surface is coated with Asus antimicrobial guard material, which makes it safe and sanitary even if you do a lot of collaboration with others around the 180 degree hinge display. And finally, the technical design of the laptop leaves no stone unturned and has a MUX switch. This is a bit more advanced and definitely a premium feature found only on high performance laptops and effectively allows you to directly channel your main GPU to the display output, avoiding the internal GPU bottleneck, so basically you get the full desktop-like experience when you really need it. So, if you're a creator who needs a lot of flexibility and mobility, this one brings out the best of both laptop and desktop worlds. Check out the link in the description to check out the details on this laptop and Intel processor and let me know in the comments how you like it. And again, make sure you stay until the end because I will plug the external camera and show you how the laptop renders this scene in real time. Now let's jump right into empty blender file and first of all let's just drag selection around the light and the cube, press X and delete. And now we'll press Shift A and we'll start with a plane. Now tap into the edit mode and press S to scale it down a little bit so it's not that large, like this. Now let's zoom in a little bit and let's press S then X and scale it up just like this. And now let's press Ctrl B then V to create a vertex bevel and now increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel to something like this. So this will effectively serve as a base for the laptop. So let's press A to select all and E to extrude and we'll make this nice and chunky because this will be very stylized and now alt click the bottom loop and let's press ctrl b to create the bevel here as well like this now make sure you don't cross these vertices down here so the bevel should be something like this here and now let's tab out and let's go into the modifiers panel let's add the bevel modifier and let's increase number of segments to two and let's increase the angle to something like 60 so we get rid of unnecessary bevels and now just reduce the amount so we get this nice rounded edge and let's make sure in the geometry the miter is set to arc and now here in the viewport we can press ctrl 1 to add subdivision surface modifier and right click and shade smooth so this should be the final result here and now let's press shift d to duplicate this and z and just move it up and now press S then Z and minus one, so we flip it. And now press G then Z and move it up a little bit more. And now let's press Ctrl A and apply the scale. So the flip is effectively in the object data as well. And now we'll move the origin point. So tab into the edit mode, press two for edge select, select this edge right here, hold shift S and snap cursor to select it. Now tab out, right click and set origin to 3D cursor. So now we are able to press R then X and just flip it like this. And to make it a little bit better, we can tap into the edit mode, press A, then G, then Y and move it back a little bit because there is some subdivision happening. And now we can tap back out, press G, then Y and move it back in the object mode. And now let's move it up slightly. OK, now we can press R, then X and flip it like this and let's take care of the bottom part. So select that one, tab into the edit mode. And first of all, let's press one for vertex select, select this vertex, hold shift, select the other one on the bottom and press J to join them. Remember, do not press F, press J because that will effectively cut into the geometry. And now let's press J to join these and on the horizontal axis as well, just like that. And now we can press Ctrl R to create a loop cut right here 
like this that will make room for some keyboard and now we can press ctrl r a few times to add some of these supporting loops just like this we don't need to be that much precise and now press 3 for face select select this little face right here hold ctrl and shift and click here to select the whole patch and now press e and extrude this down just like this and now hold shift s and snap cursor to select it and we can now tab out and let's press shift a and add a plane now tab into the edit mode and press s to scale it down like this so it almost fills the cavity there and press s then x and scale it on x axis as well and now we'll subdivide this few times and again this will be very stylized so we'll make very large buttons so let's press ctrl r and increase number of cuts with the mouse wheel to four like this and right click to release in place and now we'll press ctrl r on the other axis and increase number of cuts so we approximately create square faces like this and right click to release and now make sure you are in the face select by pressing three select everything and press ctrl b to bevel and now reduce the number of cuts with the mouse wheel and we can hold shift for smaller increments and let's just make very small gaps like this and since we were in the face select mode now these are selected so we can press x and delete faces now press a to select all and extrude just like this and now press period on a keyboard and switch to individual origins and press s to scale this down a little bit just like that and now let's press one on a numpad for a front view enable x-ray view go for vertex select select the bottom vertices press x and delete faces so they're open at the bottom and now we can tab out add bevel modifier and let's make sure we exit the x-ray view so we better see what's going on there and increase segments to two and reduce the amount to something like this and we can additionally press ctrl one to add subdivision surface right click and shade smooth so we now have some buttons um, but I want to connect some of them, so let's tab into the edit mode, press 3 for face select, and now we can select this face right here, hold shift, select the other one on the other side, and just press ctrl E for edge menu, and choose bridge edge loops that will connect this, and we can do the same thing here, like this, um, don't worry about that, um, just go and in the geometry, switch this to arc in the build modifier, and remove clamp overlap and now we'll select this face right here and press l to select linked and select multiple of these um, for example these four press x and delete vertices and now we can select these faces and again press ctrl e and bridge edge loops so we now have some spacebar happening here we can now tab out and basically that's about the keyboard so let's just prepare um, the screen so let's tab into the edit mode press 1 for vertex select and we'll do the same thing down here um, if you don't see what's happening there enable x-ray view and press j to join and here it's a little bit hard to see so let's rotate this a little bit and let's just connect these and here as well just like that and again we'll need to create some cuts here so let's exit the x-ray view press ctrl r and create some supporting loops like this and now press 3 for face select select the face in the middle and press ctrl plus on a numpad to expand the selection or you can just select this and hold ctrl shift just like before and press e and extrude this slightly like that now we'll tab out and we'll create a new plane here but to make it align a little bit better we'll press alt r to reset rotation let's tab into the edit mode and let's now enable x-ray view and the bottom face should be still selected from before so let's hold shift s and snap cursor to select it now we can tab out let's press shift a and we'll add a plane and now let's look from the top tab into the edit mode and you can see the cavities right here so let's press s to scale it down like this so it goes inside a little bit and let's press s then x and scale it up like this and now we can tab out hold shift select the top lid and press ctrl p and parent to object so now if we select the lid press r then x and rotate we should have the plane aligned right there now let's exit the x-ray view but you can see it's overlapping with the geometry so let's select the plane and we can press g then z twice to move it a little bit 
along its local z-axis and just place it like this now we'll need to make sure the normals are correct here uh, because this is probably turned around so let's press s then z twice and minus one to flip it confirm with enter and now Control a and apply that scale and final touch let's select the keyboard hold shift select the bottom part press Control p and parent to object so now we have a laptop and i want to make a little animation here so let's press zero on an unpad and let's modify the resolution a little bit so let's go to the output settings and let's choose something like 1600 to 1200 and we'll need 30 fps here and for the animation i think something like 150 frames will be enough and let's expand the timeline a little bit so we better see it and now let's select the camera press g and z twice to move it closer and now we can press g then z and move this up so now uh, the idea is that the animation starts with the laptop closed, then it opens, um, we see what's happening on the screen, and then it kind of rotates around and closes and we can loop the whole animation. So let's now select the lid again and press Alt R to reset the rotation. And don't forget to hold Shift, select the bottom part and press Ctrl P and object. So this is parented as well. And now select the bottom and press R then Z and rotate it like this. So it kind of starts tilted like that. And now we can press N for the side panel and insert this rotation. So, and let's make it rounded. So let's make it like 150 and let's right click and insert single keyframe. And to make things easier, um, let's just move all the way to 151 and let's rotate this 360 degrees around. So let's click here and we'll subtract the 360 because it will rotate the other way around. So minus 360 and let's confirm and now right click and insert single keyframe so we effectively create this one rotation and now we can modify the curve of the rotation so on the frame 30 i want the laptop to be rotated a little bit more something like this so let's right click here and insert single keyframe and around frame 100 I want the rotation to be less so let's rotate it back a little bit to something like this and right click and insert single keyframe so it will start the rotation then slow down and then complete the rotation like that and let's now hover over the timeline and press ctrl tab to go to the graph view and let's expand this even more and now to see the animation let's press a to select all keyframes and hit period on an unpad same as in the viewport to see the whole curve and this is quite okay we'll just need to um, brush it off a little bit um, but then i want the lid to open as well so let's select the lid and at around frame 20 we can start opening it so let's right click and insert x rotation insert single keyframe and then around frame 40 it should be like fully open so let's increase the rotation or decrease in this case something like this and right click and insert single keyframe let's look from the camera again and now i want this to be more dynamic i don't want this to accelerate so let's select this handle and just move it like this and now we can select this keyframe press shift d and then x and move it over to like 120 and then select this one here press shift d then x and move it here and here we'll flip this so let's create a shape like that so now if we play it it kind of opens and here it should be like a slowing down so let's select the bottom part so first of all the beginning should be like more sudden uh, because we want this to continue so let's select the handle and move it like this and then we want to replicate this angle right here so move this up and now here we'll probably need one more keyframe we'll see about that and let's make this to something like this and the slowdown should be like more sudden so we are rotating and it slows down but still rotates and then continues the rotation okay and maybe not so down so something like this okay i quite like it 
but here I want to move this here so it's like a more sudden in the beginning. Okay, I quite like it. So that's the movement. And now before we jump into materials and lighting and the rest of the scene, I want to prepare what's happening on the screen because I want like a little loading animation happening there. And that's quite easy to make and we can do this um, inside a single Blender file because we have scenes here and we can just create a new scene and basically create a whole new animation um, for the screen, render it out and then use the render output for the screen as a texture. So um, let's do that right now. I will collapse this a little bit and now let's just click here to create a new scene and we have a bunch of options. So let's select new and here you basically have like a whole new Blender file is just within the same file that you created. Don't forget to save. And now let's press Shift A and we'll add the camera. Now press Alt R to reset the rotation and press R then X and 90 degrees and just move it back. So press G then Y and move it back like this. And now here we'll create what's happening in the loading screen. So let's press Shift A and we'll add a cube. Tab into the edit mode, let's make it smaller. Let's look from the camera by pressing zero and now we'll add the bevel modifier. So let's go to the modifiers panel, add the bevel, two segments and we can reduce the amount to something like this. And we can tab out, press Ctrl 1 to add subdivision, right click and shade smooth. And now I want these to be adding up as it loads. So I will use the array modifier for that. So let's add one and here we can just increase number to something like eight and let's press G then X and move it to the middle. So we have something like this in the middle of our screen and we can, for example, make it larger, move it here and press G then Z and move it down or like this. And here in the middle, we can press shift a and we can add something um, like a circle tab into the edit mode, press S to scale it down and then R, X and 90 to have like a circular logo or something rotating in the middle. So press F to fill, let's rotate and let's extrude this a little bit like that. And now we can go ahead and add the bevel modifier, reduce the amount again, add two segments and press Ctrl 1 to add subdivision, right click and shade smooth. But here I want to modify the timeline and as you can see it's 250. Let's hold control and tab so we go into the timeline. You can see it's original 250 because this is a whole new scene so everything is reset even you know render settings if we made some um, they would be reset so that's really handy. And now here I want to do like 130 frames here uh, because if we go here to our original scene um, the lid opens around frame 20 and closes here. So here is no longer visible. So we definitely need all 150 frames for the animation. So let's go back to the scene 001. And here I will create like a looping animation of this logo. So let's press N for the side panel. And here on the rotation Z, I will right click and insert single keyframe. And here on the frame 131, I will press R, then Z and 360 and right click and insert single keyframe. And now here in the timeline, I'll press T and choose linear interpolation. So it just rotates and I think it's a little bit too slow. So let's go to frame 131 and let's rewrite this to something like 720, right click and insert single keyframe. And now it should be something better. And now let's look from the top and I can see um, this is a little bit misaligned because the origin point is right here. So let's tap into the edit mode, press A, G then Y and move it here so it rotates around the center there. Okay, so we have some logo and I want this to be loading. So let's look from the camera again and let's go to the frame one. And I want this to be loading from frame 20 because um, as you know, around frame 20, the lid opens. So let's move to frame 20 and let's modify the count to one and right click and insert keyframe. And now let's move to frame 130 and let's 
set eight, right click and insert keyframe. So now if you play it back, it will kind of load up like this. But here again, I want to press T and choose linear interpolation. So they add up a little bit slower. Okay, something like that. And now the design is completely up to you. Let me just move these things a little bit higher up and let's go here. I want this definitely to have some background. So let's press Shift A and add the plane. Press R then X and 90 to rotate and then G then Y and move it back a little bit and make it larger. So now we have background as well. And let's just set some render preview. So let's go to the render settings and I will switch to cycles, enable GPU, sound the noising and here I will switch to optics and reduce the samples to 64 because that's the sample count I will do the animation in. And now we can press Ctrl B to limit the render preview only here. Hold Z and choose rendered. So now this is everything we can see. So let's press Shift A and we'll add a light and some aerial light. Press G then Y and move this up like this. And then we can press G then Y and move it on the Y axis as well. And here we can make this interesting with some glass material or something. So let's go to the materials tab and let's create a new one. Scroll down and increase the transmission and reduce the transmission roughness. And we can now tab out and let's enable X-ray view. Press three for face select, select the bottom face. And here in the material tab, let's create a new one and let's hit assign, tab out and we'll create a new material and switch principled to emission. So we have like nice lighted cubes and let's increase the strength to something like, oh, 20 is too much definitely. So something like five. Let's look from the camera again. And now here we can give them some colors. So at frame 20, I want this to be like red, like this. So let's hover here and press I over the color and let's move to frame 130. And here we want this to be green. So let's press I here to insert keyframe and they will be changing colors. But here I want like intermediary color here in the middle. So let's choose something like orange so it's a little bit more saturated and let's press i here so we now have this animation right here let's select the circle and i think something like a metallic material will be fine and let's reduce the roughness so it gets some nice reflections and for the background we can create a new material and let's make it darker like this okay and to make this a little bit more interesting let's move this up hold shift s snap cursor to select it we can press shift a and we can add uv sphere let's tap into the edit mode let's make it larger so it wraps the logo there tab out press ctrl one to add level of smoothness right click shade smooth and we can create a new material and make it glass here as well and reduce the transmission roughness so we'll have something like this rotating inside and now if you press zero on an ampad you will get something like this happening and we can change the IOR to something like 1.1 so we can see the whole logo there and let's make it a little bit larger and additionally we can for example increase the strength of the slide and for example play with the position of this light right here so it shines a little bit more from the top okay and now let's just render this out so we can use it in our laptop animation so let's go to the output settings and right here i want to modify the resolution um let's check it out in our scene um this will be eyeballed a little bit let's go to the solid view and turn off x-ray view so i think this is like um i don't know 16 to 10 or something like that so let's go back to our scene camera view and in the output settings let's go something like 1600 to 1000 so i think this is more like it and let's choose 30 fps as well and now let's just select the folder um, where we'll render out the animation so you can see my pad right there and switch from png to ffmpeg and in the encoding choose mp4 and now let's just go to the render settings and press f12 once to just render out the first 
image and I will see it will take like one second or two second stops to render this out. If it's longer, just go ahead and play and reduce the samples. With the denoising, you really don't need the samples to be so high and this will be embed in the laptop. So definitely you don't need a lot of details here. So let's just press Ctrl F12 to render this out to file and you will see the frames are rendering one by one. And let's just wait it out. So here's our rendered out um, loading animation. Um, it should look something like this um, on your disk when you open the MP4 file. So let's just close it and I will save my file, go back to the layout view and switch the scene back to the laptop. And we can now just easily use that animation on our laptop plane, on our display here. So let's go and in the shading workspace, um, we'll create a new material and make sure um, the display plane is selected. And now let's create a new material and I will call it display just so we can identify it a little bit easier. And let's just press shift A and we'll add a new texture and image texture. And let's just plug it here in the color and let's hit open and just locate your animation. I have it right here. And here you will see it changes some settings. So first of all, um, let's set the frames to 130. Start frame is one, offset is zero. Let's make it cyclic and let's make sure the auto refresh is on. So when you play back the animation, it plays as well here. But you can see it's rotated. Um, you might have it like this or the other way around. Um, doesn't really matter. Now we'll go to the UV editing and let's hold Z here and switch to material preview. Let's zoom in. And here, um, let's make sure everything is selected. So let's press A in the edit mode and press U and unwrap. And this should produce something like this. So let's select the UV island. Let's move it here and let's press R then 90 to rotate or R then minus 90 if it's other way around. And let's press S here and scale it up and additionally it's flipped and that's probably because of the normals so the flipping of the plane didn't really help i will just display normals here by the way you can do it right here in this menu where you can click to display normals here and you can see this little blue arrow pointing this way we need to point it this way so i will press alt n and flip the normals like this and now if you press u and unwrap and press r and in this case minus 90 it should behave as expected just like this so let me uncheck display normals and now we can go back to the layout and hold z and in the material preview let's play back the animation and it behaves just as expected so that's core of the animation now i'll just create some background and some lighting add some materials to the laptop so let's hold shift s and snap cursor to world origin and let's press shift a and add a plane now scale it up There'll be our background and let's press Ctrl B to limit our render preview here, same as before. And now in the render settings, because remember, this is separated from that other scene. So we'll now need to switch the cycles again. I will use GPU and the noising here. I will switch to optics and again, I will use something like 64 samples, hold Z and switch to rendered. Now for the display plane, I will do some adjustments for the material. So let's go back to the shading menu and let's connect this to the emission as well. And let's set the emission strength to something like two. And so the display actually emits some light. And now I will enable clear coat and the roughness of the clear coat can stay as is. So now you can see it's glossy, but underneath we actually have um, you know, that screen and with that emission. So let's go back to the layout and now this is looking much better. So let's press shift A and we'll add an area light, move it up and create some lighting here. Press G then shift Z to move it back slightly like this and increase the power to something like 150 and maybe move it up and make it larger. So it's like a really soft light here. And now select the background and I want to create something like a really strong orange background here. And for the laptop, I will create like a violet color here. Again, I want this to be really stylized. And now for the keyboard, let's create the white material. And here we can tap into the edit mode. And let's press L over the space bar. So we select it all. 
and now hit L over the enter key and escape. Let's create a new material slot and hit assign. Now we can tab out and create a new material there and I want to use orange color here as well. So it's a little bit interesting and now here we can reduce the roughness of the violet material a little bit like this. And now we can just move the camera closer. And for example, you can add some things around here. Um, you can, for example, add some spheres if you want this to be more abstract or you can add something like desk stationery if you want this to be more like an office illustration. And to make this a little bit more interesting, we can press shift A, add another area light and just move it back here, switch to disk and increase the power. So we have some backlight here and you will see how nicely this looks right away okay and maybe move one here to the side to create some side reflections as well okay so that's the laptop and now we can go to the render settings and down here in the color management if it's for example too dark or something you can change the contrast settings and increase and increase the exposure and in the world settings, you can add a little bit of an ambience with color like this. Okay, and don't forget in the render settings, um, you can enable motion blur so it looks more natural in the movement. So now if we play back the animation, we have something like this happening here. There's some loading and the whole thing repeats. And now let's have a look how this renders on the Pro Art Studio Book 16 OLED. So let's have a look how this performs in real time. Um, first, I have the display scene happening right here. So let's press F12 to render this out. And we can see it took only two seconds to render. So basically no difference at all. And now I will switch this to the original laptop scene. And let's hit F12 and see how long one frame will take and it's around three seconds so so again no compromises um, regarding the performance and if i go here to the layout view and just rotate the scene around you can see this is rendering in real time in cycles so i can go back to the camera view and press playback and basically it will happen in real time it will play back the animation in real time and this is again rendered in cycles so quite mind-blowing performance from the laptop you can take on the road so that's it for today's tutorial i really hope you enjoyed this one and if you did again please leave that like and if you're new around here hit that subscribe thank you all for watching check out the laptop in the description and have a wonderful day